Your skin doesn't separate you from the world, it's a bridge through which the external world flows into you and you flow into it. Just, for example, as a whirlpool in water, you could say because you have a skin, you have a definite shape, you have a definite form. The whirlpool is a definite form, but no water stays put in it. The whirlpool is something the stream is doing. And exactly the same way, the whole universe is doing each one of us. And I see you today, and I uh, recognize you tomorrow, just as I would recognize a whirlpool in a stream. I'd say, oh yes, I've seen that whirlpool before. It's just near so-and-so's house on the edge of the river, and it's always there. So in the same way, when I meet you tomorrow, I recognize you, you're the same whirlpool you were yesterday. But you're moving. The whole world is moving through you. All the cosmic rays, all the food you're eating, the stream of steaks and milk and uh, eggs and uh, uh, everything is just flowing right through you. When you're wiggling the same way, the world is wiggling, the stream is wiggling you. But the problem is, you see, we haven't been taught to feel that way. The myths underlying our culture and underlying our common sense have not taught us to feel identical with the universe, but only parts of it, only in it, only confronting it, aliens. And we are, I think, quite urgently in need of coming to feel that we are the eternal universe, each one of us. Otherwise, we're going to go out of our heads. We're going to commit suicide, collectively, courtesy of H-bombs. And, uh, all right, supposing we do, uh, well, that will be that, and it will be life making experiments on other galaxies. Maybe they'll find a better game.
I wonder if it's ever struck you how curious a thing it is that most of the things that we experience we regard as things that happen to us which we ourselves do not originate which are events expressing some sort of power or activity that is external to ourselves and if you consider that you realize that what you mean by yourself is rather narrowly circumscribed even events that go on in our own bodies are put in the category of things that happen to us in the same way as things that go on in the world outside our skins if there's a thunderstorm or an earthquake well it happens to you you're not responsible for it but so in the same way when you have hiccups you didn't plan on it if you have belly rumbles you had no intention of doing it and as to the catastrophic act of getting born well you had nothing to do with that and you can spend all your life blaming your parents for putting you in the situation in which you find yourself and this a uh, way of looking at the world in this sort of passive mood as something that happens to you goes right down to our general feeling about life it goes down to the way in which we have been accustomed to look at human existence as a precarious event in the cosmos that uh, on the whole is depicted as being completely unsympathetic and alien to our existence
as if you are reared with a 20th century or shall we say an early 20th century common sense which is based on the philosophy of science of the 19th century uh, you regard yourself as an accident a biological accident in a stupid universe which is mechanical but has no feelings a vast pointless gyration of radioactive rocks and gas in which uh, you happen to occur of course if you don't have that point of view and you are more traditional you look upon yourself as a child of God and therefore under authority in other words there's a big boss on top of all this and uh, you better watch your P's and Q's because that Almighty is looking after you with the attitude of this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you and when you look at the world in that image or in the other image that it's a stupid mechanism either point of view you take uh, you don't really belong you are not really part of all this uh, or to put it in the strongest possible way it is quite alien to our thought that the external world which is defined as something that happens to you and your body itself is something that you got caught up with it is quite alien to consider all that as you yourself because you see we have such a myopic view of what oneself is
Now, we come here to an extremely important principle, which is the different points of view you get when you change your level of magnification. That is to say, you can look at something with a microscope and see it a certain way. You can look at it with the naked eye and see it in a certain way. You look at it with a telescope and you see it in another way. Now, which level of magnification is the correct one? Well, obviously, uh, they're all correct. They're just different points of view. When we examine our bloodstreams under a microscope, we see there's one hell of a fight going on. All sorts of microorganisms are chewing each other up. And if we got overly fascinated with our view of our own bloodstreams in the microscope, we should start taking sides, which would be fatal, because the health of our organism depends on the continuance of this battle. What is, in other words, conflict at one level of magnification is harmony at a higher level. Now, could it possibly be, therefore, that we, with all our problems, conflicts, neuroses, sicknesses, political outrages, wars, tortures, and everything that goes on in human life, are a state of conflict which can be seen in a larger perspective as a situation of harmony?
And you can say, aha, at last I see, I got the point. I've seen how all this makes sense. But what this insight depended upon was your overcoming the illusion that space separates things. That is to say, the space, the interval between your body and mine, the uh, interval created by birth at one end and death at the other. And then after somebody's death, then somebody else's birth. Uh, these are events with intervals between them. And normally we regard these intervals in time and these intervals in space as having no importance, no function. We tend to see the universe itself as really consisting in all the stars and galaxies. That's what it is. That's what we notice. But the space in which all this happens is sort of written off as something that isn't really there. But what one has to realize is that the space is an essential function of the things in the space. After all, you can't have separate stars unless there is a space around. Eliminate the space and you will see you couldn't have this phenomenon at all. And vice versa. You couldn't have the space. They wouldn't be there in any sense whatsoever if there weren't the bodies in it. So the bodies in the space and the space are two aspects of a single continuum. They're related together in exactly the same way as a back and a front. And you just don't get one without the other. 